سو بسم اللہ والحمد للہ والصلاۃ والسلام علی سید المرسلین محمد الامین اما بعد فاعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ الذي انزل علی عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له عوجا قیم لینذر بأسا شدیدا من لدنه ویبشر المؤمنین الذین یعملون الصالحات ان لهم اجرا حسنا بسم اللہ والحمد للہ I want to talk about something in in a sense in a way this is the most critical talk I'm ever about to give especially for the Muslims in the West it doesn't matter what type of Muslim you are secular moderate traditional doesn't matter this is something that is so dangerous that uh, it needs to be talked about and i'm hoping inshallah all of you who are listening to this talk of mine will share it with the others and i hope inshallah allah opens your heart to understand the importance of what i'm talking about and that is that the war between ukraine and russia <coughs> has expedited white supremacy in the western world i'm going to explain this in detail and please know it that if you are a muslim living in the west you're not going to be safe very soon i'm not even joking okay because in america for example where i live in the united states of america we have a lot of uh groups that are racist that are haters uh a lot of uh you can say uh militia groups you know 100 people here 1000 people here 2000 people there and their budget is you know $50,000 their budget is $70,000 their budget is $100,000 okay so what can how much could they do with that but now we're talking about a whole government that is going to increase white supremacy all over the west all over europe and all over america a government that is given given the leave to increase racism all over the world okay and I, i'm going to do another talk specifically for the blacks of the west so blacks in america blacks in europe they're also in the same quagmire that the muslims are in okay and i'm going to explain to you why this is happening but you need to listen to what i'm saying today fully and you need to digest what i'm saying today fully because you know we've been going through a series of events whether it was you know circus 19 covid 19 and then we got this war but now i'm telling you that this is all leading to something very very drastic and very very ugly especially for muslims and so muslims have to think about what are they going to do to protect themselves every masjid should be listening to what i'm about to say every masjid in the west should be thinking about what i'm about to say because it is so serious it is it is it's just it's it's uh very a uh, very frightening from a perspective but another perspective we have Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we know nothing happens except without his permission so now let's get started on what i want to share with you inshallah ta'ala so in buffalo here in new york exactly where i am in near the border of canada so there is there was a shooting 10 people died the guy went in he live stream himself the same way the person in new zealand live streamed himself he left behind a manifesto the same way the person in new zealand left a manifesto and <coughs> what do we find about this person that did the mass shooting what we find is that he was influenced by what by ukrainian nazis now most of you people will not know this and i'll show you this in some detail Ukraine is the country of the Nazis. Ukraine is the country that did the one of the holocausts on the Jewish people. People don't know this, but Ukraine is where majority of the Jews became Jews, known as the Khazari Empire. Okay, this is how the white people became Jews. It was in this area of Ukraine. Now I'm going to talk about that later. But what I want you to understand is how Ukraine has a problem of neo-Nazis. And because of that problem their army is neo nazis known as the azov battalion okay so azov insignia 
Bering team carries out streams mass shooting in USA. Okay, so this young man who was 18 years old, right? He was he, he had this insignia on him known as the Dark Sun. That also is an insignia or a mark that the neo Nazis in Ukraine carry. Okay, I'm going to explain this in detail, but I just need you to listen to me first. Okay, uh, and so these neo Nazis, they're white supremacists. They hate Jews, they hate Muslims, they hate Russians, they hate blacks, they hate everyone except their own race. Race is more important to them than religion. Okay, They use the Bible to say that white people are more important than everybody else. So the Azerov, you all probably heard about this uh, mass shooting that had happened in Buffalo. And there have been other shootings and there is this shooting was a result of the rise of of money that is being dumped into ukraine to fight this war why i'm going to explain to you but you need to just pay attention inshallah just for a little bit so one of the people tweets as you can read here a uh, white supremacist terrorist who killed at least 10 people at the grocery store in buffalo which is this happened literally like two three miles from where i live Okay, it's right near a very large madrasa of boys here in Buffalo. Okay, white supremacist terrorist who killed at least 10 people at the grocery store in Buffalo, New York, and live streamed it. Peyton Gendron published a fascist manifesto using the same black Nazi symbol used by Ukraine's neo Nazis Azov militia, which, by the way, NATO and the US has been arming for a very long time. Now this leads us to many more questions, but let us now continue from here. Hello, I'm Chris Williamson, and welcome to the latest edition of Palestine Declassified on Press TV, where we investigate the Israeli regime's global war against solidarity with the illegally occupied people of Palestine. Images from the war in Ukraine have dominated the headlines over the last few weeks. But the Jewish identity of Ukraine's President Zelensky has been used by many in the West to cover NATO's clear alliance with neo-Nazi battalions in the war against Russia. But it's not just NATO that's working with these neo-Nazi groups in Ukraine. Israel is arming, and its military personnel are even fighting alongside explicitly neo-Nazi units. To find out more, I'll be speaking to a couple of experts after this report from Bianca Rahim. As the battle for Ukraine rages, we ask about the involvement of the Zionist regime in the conflict and any affinities between neo-Nazi currents in the Ukrainian military and the racist ideas inherent in the Zionist movement. The Zionist regime has supplied arms to the Ukraine military, including the Nazi Azov Battalion. Azov Battalion members have been photographed toting Tibor rifles built by Israeli military industries, a subsidiary of Elbit Systems. In 2018, it was revealed that a Ukrainian military training school website indicates that training is provided by former Israeli Offense Force officers. Israelis have been confirmed as joining the fight against Russia and Ukrainian Zionists from the extremist Chabad Lubavitch sect have also signed up with the Ukraine military. The neo-Nazi Azov battalion reportedly included a number of Jewish recruits. But the connections with Zionism go much deeper. Numerous prominent Zionists hailed from the Ukraine, including two former chiefs of the Israel Defense Forces and five presidents and <coughs> prime ministers of the Zionist entity. Odessa in southern Ukraine has been referred to as the Gates of Zion. For example, the revisionist Zionist leader Vladimir Jabotinsky hailed from Odessa. Jabotinsky historically supported the Ukrainian nationalists, including their leader, Simon Pateliura. Zionist sources today credit Pateliura with responsibility for the deaths of 50,000 Jews in the pogroms in the 1920s. But Jabotinsky maintained that Pateliura was not... Now you'll say, what do Nazis who kill Jews, why is Israel supporting them now? The second question you have to ask yourself is that what does this have to do with me and you in the West... Muslims living in the West. Well, you have to listen to the whole scenario. And then I'm going to show you enough evidence that somebody that wants to know the truth will get that evidence by the end of this conversation, inshallah. An anti-Semite, even going so far as to state, when I die, you can write on my grave, this was the person who signed an agreement with Padliora. Following the Western-sponsored coup in Ukraine in 2014, a school was named after Jabotinsky in Odessa in 2016. The Ukrainian nationalists under Stepan Bandera collaborated with the Nazis in the 1939 to 1944. Remember that this is where one of the holocausts of the Jews happened. It was in Ukraine. And like I said, this was one of the places where many, many Jews in the West used to go to. Five war. 
Today he is revered by the Ukrainian far right. The opening RC Azov Battalion has now been incorporated into the Ukrainian armed forces. Much has been made of the fact that the president of the Ukraine, Zelensky, is Jewish, with the implication that he would not collaborate with Nazis. In fact, Zelensky is the protege of a powerful Ukrainian oligarch, Igor Kolomoysky. Kolomoysky, who has both Ukrainian and Israeli citizenship, owns Privet Bank, a company from which he is accused of looting more than $5 billion. Zelensky was the beneficiary of a network of shell companies set up to send cash from Kolomoysky offshore. Kolomoysky set up his own militia in 2014 and also funded the neo-Nazi Azov Battalion. Zelensky has ceded power to the far right in Ukraine and now depends on them as frontline fighters. On March 1st, Zelensky again showed the practical alliance with the far right by appointing Colonel Maxim Marchinka as the new governor of Odessa. Marchinka was the commander of the neo-Nazi Adar Brigade, accused of Daesh style war crimes in 2014. As we have seen in this report, the Zionist regime and its supporters are intimately involved in Ukraine. Both historically and now, the Zionist movement is allied with the Ukrainian far right. We're joined today by the British Iraqi hip hop artist and activist who's a patron of the Stop the War Coalition. Loki is also the host of the What's Not podcast on Mid Press, which investigates secretive organizations of powerful vested interests. We'll hear from Loki in a moment. Our resident expert, David Miller, will also be giving us the benefit of his insights. David's an academic and former professor at Bristol University and a leading scholarly critic of Israel. He co founded and is a co director of the lobbying watchdog initiative, Spinwatch. Welcome to the show. Loki has. Before they continue, let me mention this. For those people that want to kind of understand what's happening, the way they created an ISIS, the way the US sponsored them, pumped money into Syria so these people would stand up against the Syrian government and try to wipe out the Syrian government. They tried to do that before Russia got involved. <clears throat> they're try they have done now the same thing in the West. They're now using the neo Nazis. You could say neo Nazis are like the Khawarij of okay, if you want to understand that. So the neo Nazis and the white supremacist uh uh sometimes repressed and sometimes expressed feelings uh, that emerge amongst the white people, okay? Th th they're being funded now and being trained now to incite this feeling of white supremacy all across Europe, which I'm going to talk to you about. But now let's listen to this and then I'll get back to this and then talk to you about how this affects us and how that relates to this shooting uh, in, in a little bit. To start with you, can you tell us what's the uh, relationship between uh, Zelensky and the far right? Well, essentially, Zelensky has overseen the integration into the Ukrainian state of several explicitly neo Nazi movements. He awarded towards the end of the last year the Hero of Ukraine Award to one of the main fighters from the right sector organization, which is um, what, you know, one of the Bandarite organizations. In addition to that, he... When we say the right side, means the neo-Nazis. ...pointed as advisor to commander-in-chief of the Ukrainian Armed Forces, Dmitry Yurosh, another very visible fighter from the right sector. As was mentioned, he has appointed as the governor of Odessa, one of the Ida battalion. And overall, what we see here is a push to really put the Ukrainian state at the uh, the need of these major neo-Nazi groups. I mean, David, people talk about the fog of war, don't they? And uh, an example of this is that uh, Ukraine can't possibly have a problem with uh, Nazis because the president is Jewish. What do you say to that? I would say, you know, let's look back at his uh, inaugural speech when he became president. Was it in there, in the official translation on the government website? He talks about the Ukraine becoming like Israel and defending its native land. And of course, that's a very strongly Zionist thing to say, but it also points out the strong confluence there is between Zionist ideas uh, and Ukrainian nationalist ideas. These are far right ideas which depend on, uh, on an ethno conception of the state. And, and of course, these work very well with the far right. So Zelensky himself. So what he's saying is that just as Israel is an ethnically based nationalistic nation, so too would be Ukraine. Yes, he's Jewish. Uh, he's also you know, strongly oriented towards Israel, but that in itself is a sign of being oriented really towards the far right. And the evidence all, as uh, uh, Lucas has been saying, is that he has moved towards the far right. He's tried politically to distance himself from them, but in practice he depends on them for, on, as far right fighters. Look, I mean, whether you could explain for our viewers what the relationship is between Zelensky and this oligarch, uh, Igor Kolomoisky. Well, Igor Kolomoisky, a triple citizen, even though it's illegal in Ukrainian law, of Ukraine, Cyprus, and the, the uh, Israeli regime, he's also a citizen of that entity. Now, he was the backer of the TV shows, which uh, Zelensky was a major star of, and he was able to take him from being that star to his landslide victory in the presidential election of 2019. He was the top funder of Zelensky. Now, what's interesting is in addition to funding Zelensky, <coughs> funded the Azov Battalion and the Idar Battalion as well. At the same time, essentially, these 
the, the, the period of thrusting Zelensky in front of the masses on TV, Colin Westy was also funding these explicitly um, right-wing and neo-Nazi groups. So now here's the situation, okay? So let me, before I go into details, because I'm going to show you details that are happening. I'm going to go into quite some detail, but <coughs> let me explain to you why this is dangerous for us Muslims. There's a big Russia, a big country with a powerful military, and you got a teeny weeny Ukraine with not a powerful military. What can they do to fight Russia? Well, they need more weapons and they need to recruit. So what do they need to do to recruit? They need to recruit outside their territory. To recruit people outside their territory, they need to convince people of their neo-Nazi ideology in America. They need to convince people of their neo-Nazi agenda in uh, other countries of NATO, like Britain, Canadian, um, French, German, etc., etc. They need to be able to convince them that we're the most supreme and we need to fight off these uh, Russians uh, and all other ethnic groups. Okay, so now when they, how are they recruiting these people? They're recruiting them through the internet. Okay, and when they're recruiting them through the internet, what is happening? They're changing the mind and bringing and 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 making people bold in expressing their racist slurs. And before, like I said, some small group has $100,000, $200,000. Now, Ukraine is being given just by the U.S., for example, $33 billion and billions of dollars to buy arms. But little Ukraine can't fight big Russia. They need to recruit mercenaries. They need to recruit people to come and fight, okay, and send them the front lines, okay. So... How will they do that? They do that through the internet. They use the money to recruit the people. Okay? Which means that they create a situation of neo-Nazism across America and across NATO via the internet to convince them to come here and fight with us, as I will show you. So now you have, now these people, number one, you have people in America, around America, in, in Europe, who are listening to this online or are part of this with their uh, telegram groups, part of their WhatsApp groups, part of different chat groups, talking about white supremacy, white supremacy ideas, right? And that's happening all across. And then those people that do take the jump and come to Ukraine and fight, what happens when they go back home? They go back home with those ideas. Okay, they got injured, they went back home. They go back home with those racist uh, neo-Nazi ideas and increase the uh, polarization within the societies, societies that are already bending towards nationalism. Because democracy in the world, what is happening to democracy in the world is that democracy is bending towards what? The majority. Democracy is bending towards going the way of the majority or, and repressing the minority. This is what's happening in India. This is what's happening all across Europe with all the right wingers. This is what happened in America, that the Republican Party uh, is mostly white and they are what they look down upon minorities okay and because that's where the white supremacists are within America in the, in the right uh, in the uh, in the Republican Party okay <clears throat> now let's continue and look at this from other uh, perspectives inshallah to the effect that uh, well, there's Nazis everywhere, so if you get hung up with a few Nazis in Ukraine, I mean, well, how do you respond to that? Well, I've, had, I've heard people say that. I've heard them say, look, the Nazis in Spain are doing well in the elections. Certainly, there's Nazis in, in Russia, and there are Nazis in this country too, but none of them are in government. None of them are in tribal positions in the military, uh, in the police. The, the, the Azov Brigade's street army is deployed alongside the national police across the Ukraine. This is, a, this is an army of thugs, which is there to intimidate anyone who steps out of line. That means, of course, people who are, seem to be Russian or pro-Russian. It probably also means, and it has been in terms of their ideology, Jews too. Although, of course, there are some Zionists who are fighting on the other side. Yeah. And, uh, Logan, is there a precedent for, for NATO, or even Israel for that matter, associated so closely with neo-Nazis? I mean, it's extraordinary. Well, I think the key point that was mentioned in the clip that you showed was about Vladimir Jabotinsky. This is not some minor French figure within the Zionist movement. There is no other figure in Zionist history who has more streets, more hotels, more cinemas, more parks, more schools named after them within Occupy Palestine 48 than Vladimir Jabotinsky. Now, his followers 
went on to be the Stand Gang, the well-known terrorist organization that targeted uh, British soldiers and Palestinians, of course, more. Well, in 1941, and this is historical fact, the Stern Gang wrote a letter to the Nazi government of Germany offering to enter the war on the Nazi side and supporting the Madagascar plan. Um, there is a long history of this intertwining of the ideas, Theodore Herzl put it, that the anti-Semites of Europe will be the best friends of the Zionist movement because they will provide the Zionist movement with the human material through which the state can be built. Okay, now here is a very important point that's also mentioned where in the Quran. وَجِعْنَاكُمْ لَفِيفَ Allah says, we'll bring you all back. How do you cause Jews? Now, I will mention to you something very uh, the uh, theologically interesting from a, for in the Jewish side, which is that Ukrainian Jews and the Chabad don't necessarily believe in moving to Israel. They're a lot of them are against moving to Israel. They're anti-Zionists, a lot of them. Well, then how do you get a whole bunch of anti-Zionists uh, to move to Israel? How do you get Jews that are happy in America and have political power and education and stability in America to move to Israel? How do you get European Jews to move to Israel? Well, what has been the big nemesis in history of Jews? It's the neo-Nazis. Nazis killed Jews. Well, give flame to the fire. Give flame to neo-Nazis. Let neo-Nazis rise again. And after the neo-Nazis rise again, what will the Jews do? Well, first they ran away from the neo-Nazis in Germany, right? And then came to the U.S. or Britain or some other place. Now, when the neo-Nazis are in America itself, okay? And when the neo-Nazis are in Europe itself, where are they going to go? Where are all these people that are well-educated Jews, very happy in the uh, respective countries they live in? They're happy there. Where are they going to go? They're going to go running to Israel. Israel is going to say, come, we'll give you citizenship. We'll give you everything. So Israel wants to create a situation in the world by supporting the neo-Nazis that it'll force the Jews, it'll force anti-Semitism. As uh, this brother just said, he just stated that the best friend of the Jews are the anti-Semitics, right? Because they they help create the sympathy, but it also drives their agenda. And so now you have neo-Nazis in European and American world. What's going to happen when the hate rises? It's going to force the Jews to leave. The question is that when that situation is happening and the Jews are leaving, what will be the situation of the Muslims? Okay, so now... Instead of a small organizations that have militias, you have a whole government that is spewing and dumping hatred, hatred as part of its recruitment process to bring people into Ukraine to fight. Okay, and it's spreading hate all over. And to, I guess, the United States government, it seems like it's a worth price worth pay, paying for it, if as long as you defeat Russia. Right, so that's how it is. But what does it mean for me and to you and to the blacks of this country? What does it mean for us? It means that somebody is is giving flame to the fire of hatred, of white supremacy, and we will be sitting ducks if we are not prepared. We'll be sitting ducks uh, just like Muslims were sitting ducks in New Zealand. May Allah forgive all of them that passed away, that when the guy was streaming himself and shooting just like this guy in Buffalo was streaming himself and shooting, getting their ideas from white supremacist ideas, okay? And mind you, these people and this person that was shooting in New Zealand and this person that was shooting in Buffalo, both of these hate Muslims. They completely hate Muslims, okay? And so now on top of the normal level of hate, there you're, you're fanning fire, uh, you're... <clears throat> putting air to fire, right? You're trying to create uh, this feeling of... And because as the economies go down, what's going to happen? As the economies go down, as jobs, as, as, as because of what happened with Circus 19, all the businesses were shut, and then because of uh, this war between Ukraine and Russia, the supply lines being slow, everything is not okay, things are worse, White people are angry. They're like, why did these minorities come here and take our jobs? 
take our good jobs and we don't get the good jobs and they get the good jobs and the Asians are so smart. White people, a lot of them are very angry and in some ways rightfully so. <clears throat> and in other ways, and their uh, white supremacy is not okay no matter what. But um, it's important to note that the right wing, which is where the nations are tending towards, right, uh, is, is largely built upon hate and blame. And so somebody's uh, fanning the fires for that through this Nazism. And this is something that's going to affect every Muslim in the West, period. There's no question about it. Now, let me go into uh, some more details. Let, let's listen to this, and then I'm going to show you a lot of things that are happening that are relevant to this situation. It doesn't matter how people feel about it. These are historical facts about how we came to be where we are today. It's really interesting and uh, fascinating uh, insight, uh, Loki. And uh, I wonder if, well, uh, sort of question I'd just like to ask you is, um, what do you think explains why Israel's arming the Azov Battalion with these uh, Tango rifles? I mean, is he facing any kind of pushback for that? Well, when you look at the general NATO policy of pumping Ukraine full of weapons since 2014, there, you know, Prushenko, the uh, coup, the president after the coup, the US-backed coup, said uh, publicly on TV, he thanked the Swedes, the British and the Americans for sending the weapons. NATO nations were generally pumping this area full of weapons in order to draw the Russian state into a quagmire. So when the Israeli regime sends the Tavor rifles to Azov, they are merely part of this general push which is taking place. It's uh, certainly a dangled uh, weapon. Well, thanks very much indeed, both of you, for that. But uh, we'll come back for a further discussion shortly after this video about the mysterious Chabad Lubavitch sect that's acting in Ukraine as well as occupying Palestine. Chabad Lubavitch is an ultra-Orthodox Jewish sect with more than 10,000 emissaries in 100 countries worldwide. There are 52 centers in Ukraine and around 150 emissaries. Chabad is a dominant force in the Jewish community in Ukraine. Nipro, Ukraine is the home to the largest Chabad, indeed the largest Jewish center in the world. Its benefactor was Ukrainian oligarch Igor Kolomoysky. But what is Chabad Lubavitch? Founded in the small Russian town of Lyubaveki near the border of Belarus, it is a messianic sect which believes Jews are the chosen people. According to Haaretz, Chabad's key religious text state that... So now, here's the commonality, right? Neo-Nazis say, we're the chosen people, we're the white people, we're chosen by God. And here's the Jews saying, we're the chosen people. So this is the common element that both of them are willing to work on. Non-Jews have only... And what happens if you're a white Jew? Well, then you got both sides. Animal souls, not human souls. It runs a children's group called the Army of Hashem, which in the words of the leader of the sect, the rebel who died in 1994, is dedicated to waging war against non-Judaism. The supremacism of Chabad is nowhere more evident and pointed than in its activities in Palestine. A book called the King's Torah, written by two Chabadi rabbis from the notorious Yitzhar illegal settlement, justifies the killing of Palestinian children. It's not just words either. Chabad Lubavitch is heavily involved in the furthest extremes of the settler movement in Palestine. Chabad Lubavitch opposes returning any land at all to Palestinians, and according to the Zionist intelligence agency Shin Bet, almost all price tag revenge attacks on Palestinians are carried out by followers of the sect. Chabad has links with the movement of the extremist Rabbi Meir Kahan, whose organization, the Jewish Defense League, was designated as a terrorist organization by the FBI. Chabad was reportedly implicated in funneling money from the US to Israel for Kahan, Today, it is deeply implicated in alleged fraud and embezzlement by Ukrainian oligarch Igor Kolomoisky. The Department of Justice has filed four separate actions against Kolomoisky, who is banned from entering the U.S. Two Chabad leaders are specifically <coughs> in the justice. Given this history, it's no surprise that Chabad Lubavitch is integral to the events in Ukraine and is aligned with the far-right Ukrainian nationalist. By the way, Ukraine is the center of every fitna, every chaos. Human trafficking, human trafficking from Ukraine to Israel, human trafficking from Ukraine to Turkey and other Muslim countries for that matter. Uh, every type of uh, dirty business is run in Ukraine. Every type of uh, every type of fitna is in Ukraine. And mind you, this is the place that Sutra Kahaf points out to, right? This is the place that is uh, on the one side uh, Zulkarnain goes and finds the Black Sea. On the other side is the desert, and in the middle is this mountainous area. And the north, and this is where the wall is built. And the north of that is where this Ukraine is exactly. Okay, and I have a video in which I talk specifically about that. I'm just touching main points right now. Okay, so now let's look at some other things that I want to share with you so that we have a better understanding of what's going on. Here's a map of hate groups in America, okay? 
So this is uh, in 2021. We tracked 733 hate groups across America. So this is basically before the war. Now imagine this is what it was before the war. This is already militias, hate groups in America that are working uh, to recruit people into their groups, into their militias against Muslims, against Jews, against blacks, against whatever. So this was already happening in America. Now imagine when this is now, these groups are already in conversation with the neo-Nazis in Ukraine who are funding them with more information, more recruitment information so that some of these people will go and fight for Ukraine and uh, will go and fight for them in Ukraine as I will show you shortly inshallah. Okay, now this is how much hate groups were there. Seven, not two or three or ten or a hundred. Seven hundred and thirty-three were being tracked, and now, now instead of now, there will be billions of dollars spent in recruiting these people and helping these people recruit other people to go help people in Ukraine, but ultimately spreading the ideology, the ideas of white supremacy. I hope you understand what I'm trying to say here. Why this is bad for Muslims in America. And this is certainly one of the most bizarrest of alliances that you can ever think of, right? Neo-Nazis, friends with the, the Israel. In videos, Israelis, and this is in, New, in times of Israel is reporting this, okay? In videos, Israelis fighting with Ukraine, thank Israel. Jewish people for support, okay? Israeli mercenaries teaming up with neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Russia says, another article by Jerusalem Post, Israeli weapon seen used by neo-Nazi Ukrainian unit against Russia. Okay. Time magazine has an uh, ar article by the title of what? Like, share, recruit. How a white supremacist militia uses Facebook to radicalize and train new members. CNN had an article on a far-right battalion has a key role in Ukraine's resistance. Its neo-Nazi history is being exploited by Putin, meaning Putin is because these neo-Nazis are killing Russians in, uh, in, in, in parts of Ukraine. So he's upset, but uh, they're trying to twist things around here. But the fact is that there's neo-Nazis in Ukraine who are ahead, uh, who are, have a military arm that are doing a large portion of the fighting, if not most. And they're recruiting people from all over the Western world, white supremacists, and trying to uh, inject ideas of white supremacy across America and Europe. So WSWS.org says, Ukraine becomes an international rallying point for neo-Nazis and mercenaries, which I'm going to show a little bit more. So uh, if you can read this, Gunmen in Buffalo mass shooting had a racial slur and neo-Nazi code written file written on rifle. So he had the insignia on his clothes. Uh, he had uh, the insignia on his clothes. So besides creating an environment where Jews will go back, besides creating a very terrible and dangerous environment for Muslims, they also are going to create an environment of gun control. They're also going to create an environment of social media control. As you will see from this conversation here, uh, what does this lady say about this shooting? Those who live here, the wonderful tight knit neighborhood, and to see that sense of security shattered by an individual, a white supremacist who has engaged in an act of terrorism and will be prosecuted as such in a cold hearted calculating way. A military style execution targeting people who simply want to buy groceries in a neighborhood store. It strikes us in our very hearts to know that there's such evil that lurks out there. Mark my words, we'll be aggressive in our pursuit, pursuit of anyone who subscribes the ideals professed by other white supremacists and how there's a feeding frenzy on social media platforms where hate festers more hate. That has to stop. These outlets 
must be more vigilant in monitoring social media content. We already talked about this, how this young kid had the as uh, as of insignia bearing teen carries out stream mass shooting in u.s and you can expect that if as the long as this war in ukraine between russia is going that there'll be more of these and more people will be doing silly acts like this global time has an article called u.s mass killing exposes dangerous trend of white supremacism this article on European ethno-nationalist and white supremacy groups, I'm not going to go through the whole article, of course, but let me give you the key points. European far-right ethno-nationalist groups have cast immigrants as a scapegoat for economic hardship faced by young Europeans. Rather than promote overt white, uh, r rather than promote overt white supremacy, these groups uh, denigrate minorities, particularly Muslim immigrants, as detrimental to European culture. Far-right political parties like Germany's alter, uh, alternative uh, and Italy's uh, groups have been able to generate substantial popular support by promising to defend their respective countries against cultural attacks of immigrants and foreign influences and have con consequently made gains in domestic pl pr uh, parliamentary elections. Okay, so... Uh, Groups, groups including Combat 18 and Nordic Resistance Movement, which openly embrace neo-Nazi ideology and violent tactics, are still able to recruit for violent activities despite the rise of nonviolent populist groups. Okay, uh, Groups like Les uh, and its youth wing uh, generation have renounce, renounced uh, violence in favor of utilizing social media and public Demonstrations to portray themselves as legitimate mainstream movements protecting European culture. These groups have directly targeted Europe's youth through social media and public demonstrations, meaning this is a big danger to Muslims. Okay, uh, These are groups that they are absolutely, as you will see, they're completely ruthless. They have no heart. They have no heart whatsoever. When you start thinking you're better than everyone else, this is Iblis. This is shaitan. This is Satanism at its worst. And when it's played out in a war, it's even worse than worse. It's really, really evil. And so this white supremacy is on the rise, right? And it's it's now on the rise, particularly because of the Ukrainian neo-Nazis being supported by the world. When they spread these ideas across America, across Europe, and they get recruits, what do they get? Each volunteer would receive a salary of 3000 a month, same as a soldier. Okay, A U Ukrainian military officer and head organizer, in organizer of International Legion in Western Ukraine, who declined to give his last name for security reasons, said this. They, they get $3,000 a month. And the fact is they don't. Okay, They trap them there and make them fight there and give them nothing. And I have there are a lot of people that have been exposing this. Okay. In the newspaper Arab Weekly, there's an article by the title of Concerns Mount Over Recruitment of Foreign Fighters in Ukraine War. Against U.S. wishes, Ukrainian embassy recruits Americans to fight in war. Okay. So this guy that did the shooting in Buffalo, Peyton uh, Grand, uh, Grandon, use of black sun icon sparks bizarre debate over Ukrainian Azov battalion. And these Ukrainian white supremacists, what do they actually think about their Jewish counterparts? Ukraine run by miserable Jews, says rebel chief. Okay, so these this Azrov battalion thinks of their leader as a miserable Jews. Another interesting point is, you know, now they're beginning to divide the world into all subjects, how it aligns between vaccine and those that did vaccine and didn't. So... Uh, Far-right Ukrainian official claims anti-vaxxers paving way for Russian invasion, meaning anti-vaxxers are more sympathetic to Russia, whereas the vaxxers were not sim as sympathetic to the Russians. Okay, this is what they're saying. This is a picture of when neo-Nazis had actually surrendered to R Russia, the Soviet Union, uh, in World War uh, II. Okay, can you find the same here? 
uh, here you will find a post uh, written by an American who is trying to go to Ukraine to fight. Uh, if you know me personally, you know how much I despise this sort of post, but some things are more important than what I feel. My team is in Ukraine right now. No funding for anything. Food, housing, etc. Fuel all paid out of pocket by everyone here. There's no organization at this scale and it's chaos. We need vehicles, NVG, thermals, and much more. So th these are things that will better our odds and keep us alive. Okay. So you have people writing these types of things. Congress bans arms to Ukraine. They, uh, the, the, one of them tried to uh, ban this. Uh, Ukrainian militia behind brutal Romani attacks getting state funds. A Ukrainian court penalizes news groups outlets for calling right-wing groups neo-Nazis. So this is what's happening in Ukraine itself. Okay, this is a picture of the neo-Nazis in Ukraine holding a picture of uh, Adolf Hitler. Maybe I should have started with this. Yeah, this is neo-Nazis in Ukraine. Uh, giving a salute to some guy that died that was a big neo-Nazi. Uh, Citizens March commensuring the, uh, the Galicia division, which is a neo-Nazi division. So you have everybody here doing that hand symbol that, uh, you know, Hitler taught everyone. Right? This is another, uh, we in today. And, and then you have people in mainstream newspaper like Adil Raja saying things like world needs a new Hitler the world today needs a Hitler and this is a common thing especially by this person he's been saying this for seven years but it's like you hate Hitler in in when you talk about in terms of books and society but then you're also pushing it so the world's become very schizophrenic you know here's another uh, picture of these neo-nazis in Ukraine okay Uh, here's a, uh, a neo-Nazi that went to Ukraine to fight. Uh, I think he was either British or American. You know, he went and then he came back. But what will happen now that he's back home? He doesn't have a leg. He's more miserable. He's going to say more racial slurs, more things against uh, minorities. Same thing, this British guy uh, was killed. He was a mercenary. Okay. Those that go back home, this is uh, the Russian, uh, I think, oh, these are um, neo-Nazis showing their insignia uh, over here on their, the batch, the, the, the swastika insignia. And then you have here people hailing, okay, uh, the neo-Nazis. Uh, Oh, this is interesting. This is an American who gets arrested for wearing a Russian t-shirt. Uh, and he says, I know who you guys are. You guys are all neo-Nazis. Keep crying. You are Nazi. You're Nazi. See that? Keep crying. You are Nazi. You're Nazi. Yeah, no, I know history. Ukraine, Nazi... So here's a group of Nazis that are uh, prepare, you know, learning how to fight for the war. And soon these will be in our doorsteps in America and in Europe and in London and all, all over Europe. These people will be there. Okay. These people with these, they'll be there with these ideas. They're going to be there and they're going to increase in number. Uh, this is the Russian army going in to arrest these neo-Nazis in Ukraine. This is a symbol of the swastika they have on the uh, wall. Right here's another neo-Nazi uh, with the swastika on his uh, tattooed on himself. Uh, here is a group of neo-Nazis uh, treating uh, churchgoers very badly in Ukraine, threatening them, threatening women and children and men telling them all to go to one side. Uh, 
Документы. I guess they're asking for some document from these churchgoers. So this is the type of ideology that's being promoted all across the West. You and my house, your house is in danger by the day with people like this being funded by the United States and NATO, with them funding these ideologies. What will happen? Jews are going to be safe going back home. What's going to happen to the Muslims in the West? What's going to happen to the Muslims in the West? Are Muslim scholars in the West even thinking about this? Let me share this with you. Group out of Lvov in western Ukraine. What happened is the United States and European Union mobilized this virulent nationalist group out of Lvov in western Ukraine, among whom were these neo-Nazis who worship Stepan Bandera and the, Band uh, the Banderista movement, uh, which was a pro Nazi Ukrainian national movement carried out a resistance in that area for decades. Um, these guys came in and took over Maidan, violently overthrew the, the, the legitimate president of Ukraine, and then imposed themselves through force of violence into the Ukrainian body politic. To give you an example of how powerful they are, when Poroshenko, who was the <coughs> for Zel Zelensky, uh, negotiated the Minsk Accords in 2015, 2014, 2015, you know, he agreed that all they had to do is give a special autonomous situation to their status to the Donetsk and Lugansk, and they would stay part of Ukraine. He agreed with Germany and France. Then he came back, and the neo-Nazis said, if you try and implement that, we'll kill you. Americans get upset with a bunch of rioters taking the capital and then leaving the same day. I get upset about it. I'm not happy about it. But the, it ain't an insurrection. An insurrection is what happened in Ukraine. It's happening every day. Zelensky was told. He was elected to be the president who brought peace. If you remember, Zelensky toured the front line because they were supposed to disarm. And he went up to the Azov battalion and he said, disarm. And they laughed at him, kicked him out. He said, I'm the president of Ukraine. They said, shut up. We'll slap you. He had to leave. And he was told, if you sign Minsk, we will hang you by the neck until dead. That's the control these people have. And they've done it in the military. They, you know, These people should have been disbanded, arrested, shot. Instead, the military absorbed them and then promoted their officers throughout the ranks so that there's neo-Nazis everywhere. And the biggest embarrassment of all is when British, American, and Canadian troops go to Ukraine to train that military and NATO tactics, NATO equipment, the photographs show that they're training the Azov Battalion because those were the first units the Ukrainian military brought forward for training. We trained Nazis. Believe that or not, that's what it is. Okay, and so, uh, again, how does this affect you and me? Uh, this is the Russian military making them take off their clothes to see if they have any tattoos. Okay, uh, we can just skip this for now. This guy, he takes off his shirt and shows his SWAT sticker on his back. As you'll see, oh, see that? That's a swastika. So Russia is fighting against these neo-Nazis, but Russia is on the wrong side, of course. That's what the world is being told. No one's being told. This is a young lady talking about how her family has been killed by the neo-Nazis because they didn't agree with them, right? Here's an American mercenary that 
basically got killed. He's in an ambulance right now. Later, he'll be dead uh, because he went to war there. The, these are people who are part of the KK Klan or other su white supremacist groups that end up over there, fighting over there. For what? Because they agree with them in the ideology. Same thing here. I don't remember where this person is from, but he's one of them, one of those mercenaries. Okay. This is another mercenary. He was from Britain. He was trying to uh, uh, do an interview in, in Britain saying that things are not in Ukraine, as they had said. Um, and uh, here's a passport of an American uh, mercenary who had been killed. This is uh, an, a video of one of the mercenaries that sent a message home. Uh, this is another mercenary. Okay. So all this is to show you what? All this is to show you that uh, this is serious, very, very serious stuff um, that's happening in the world right now. And, and, and so you have little Ukraine and big Russia, and little Ukraine can't fight no big Russia. So America and NATO needs to pump money in so they can recruit people with their racist, racist ideas and spread their racist ideas across the world particularly Europe and America, so that we all will be in danger, so the Jews will get back, so they'll control the social media, they'll do some control of uh, gun laws, right? And all this just through this war. Like I said, Rush, Ukraine, this place mentioned in Stukhov is the most facade place in the world. In the world, it's the most place of facade in terms of business, in terms of morality, in terms of every single way, in terms of murdering people. Uh, and now these murdering ideas, these hate ideas, these evil spewed ideas will be all over. And now, uh, before I end, I want to say, please do subscribe. Please read my comment section. Please support my uh, work, inshallah ta'ala. If Allah puts it in your heart to support my work, support my work. But definitely, definitely, no matter what, get this video in everyone's hands if there's somebody that knows how to you know make this video better uh to do animation or something like that to get the, the what's happening in the muslim what's ha going to happen to the muslims in the west facing these threats uh please please do it ever i mean i don't want any money just do it and send me the video and i'll put it on my 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 channel and you can use it wherever you want but this is really really important that Muslims begin to understand that the masajids and Muslim homes need to start looking for uh, plans of security. Okay, we need to be more secure. Every Juma needs to be more secure. Every Eid needs to be more secure. Muslim masjids need to be having a meeting on security. Muslim masjids need to be having a meeting on how we are going to protect ourselves. Okay, and so, uh, you know, this is why you have to have a jama'ah with an emir, with a jama'ah. And you have to make hijrah plans in case things really go bad. you got to be, have a way out. And so every Muslim in America that uh, can have a hijrah plan should have a hijrah plan outside the borders. And those that can't need to make hijrah plans within America. Uh, I don't know how to emphasize this, but things are getting worse day by day. As the economy goes down, hateful ideas will go up. Okay? And so, please... Uh, Bismillah, spread this everywhere. Definitely subscribe. Definitely read my comment section. Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I hope this has put you all on alert and a vigilant state. And you should talk about this with your family members, with your friends, with your people in your mas masjid. Uh, take this video to, to your masjid today and tell the people there. We need to watch this video. It's important. Okay, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.